is wild bergamot. If you haven't smelled it, smell that. It's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> could be like a right cover up. stand or something, you know. Really? What kind of animals what like I... this? Oh, it, dude, this is like a really awesome pollinator species. Here comes some of them. So those are the seeds of wild bergamot. This is a mint. Easy way to tell mints apart is their stems are square. So if you feel the stems, it'll have a square stem with four corners. Oh, I'll be darned. So that's a good way to always identify the different mint species. But that's a man. It's a great pollinator one, um, and uh, you you attract a lot of insects, and you you got a lot of food for birds and you know young turkeys and stuff like that. So. Quail, quail, yep. I was up in Roundstone last year, and they have this huge field of Coreopsis, which looks real similar to a lot of these Rebecca's. It's a yellow flower, and uh, they saw some of it moving out there, and they got closer, and it was baby quail like perched up in the tops of flowers, just eating insects, catching insects that are flying around them. It's I'll be crazy. Done. It's this here. That is a uh, Desmodium. This is, uh, I guess, a, I think a tick trefle is what a lot of people call it, but it's also a beggar's lie. So this is what sticks to your legs. Oh yeah. And uh, man, really high quality deer brows. Um, and then the seeds are eaten by quail and turkeys a lot. That's a really high quality one for wildlife. A lot of Indian grass out here, which is pretty uncommon in Alabama, but y'all have it everywhere up here. And then these are some native thistles. And uh, that's a really great one for pollinators. You see that? Some sort of beetle in there right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, another one, ladybug. This is a really great one for pollinators too. Butterflies and stuff go crazy over those. That milkweed right there? That's dog bane, I think. That's what I was looking at. Dog bane usually has these branches that come off of it as well it'll still it'll milk it has like that latex sap like milk or like milkweed has don't get that in your eye apparently it's a little blondy or something really yeah but uh here's some rattlesnake master oh right here that's a very high quality prairie species i don't see it very often in alabama um, unless it's like a very high quality prairie remnant but that's the oldest pair of shoes ever found in North America was made out of rattlesnake master leaves so they these uh they would have made cordage Native Americans made cordage out of this and then they would make a lot of their baskets and and bags and mats and shoes and stuff out of this so they'd have twisted it a bunch and back on itself made like a, a cordage and in the winter time if it dries out it's easier to make it out of it's easier to make it then but that pair of shoes was like 8,000 years old. They found it in a cave in like Arkansas. And that's what it was Kentucky. made from. Yeah. Rattlesnake. Feel that. It's like leather, man. Oh, man. You ain't kidding. That thing is solid. I want to make something out of it. and I want to make some shoes or a hat or something. But that's a really cool one. Very, very high quality one for wildlife. You can see where the seeds have been eaten off of the ones from last year. So that was last year's and all the seeds are gone off of it. Oh, yeah. The birds, the birds hammer them. Uh, but man, tons of stuff out here. Woodland sunflowers, Rebecca's, black-eyed Susans, all this partridge pea. We don't have prairies like this left in Alabama much. Like this would be very high quality where I'm at. Well, we're on a pretty special place right here because the surrounding area does not have a lot of this. Yeah. Like this particular area has got tons of it and there's always deer coming out of this spot. Like yeah. anytime you drive around this area, there's deer in the evenings piling out of here. Yeah. I think when we first got here, I could tell by the amount of birds that were out here that this place is nice. Adam pulled up his like, uh, the Merlin bird app, you yep. know, where you can listen uh, to all the birds. And it was just like huge list of birds that he was hearing. And, uh, and that's because this place is so diverse. You got a lot to offer for them here. So if y'all want to learn more about this type of plant ID, info you can go follow kyle at the native habitat project right yep on tiktok instagram yep facebook facebook YouTube. you put out all kind of videos on uh, especially these prairie species yeah yeah just really trying to create some uh discussion about these plants and their importance and and educate the public as much as i can about you know how useful they are to wildlife so yeah and we're trying to protect them and create more of it here at the habitat association so if you want to help you can donate and this is our goal is to produce more of these prairies just like this one. Yep, that's right.